Recently I was asked if I could make a video showing how to put text behind objects. So in this video, I'm going to do my best to show how this can be done using Movavi's Pickverse. Let's go. To begin, bring your image into Pickverse. You can do this by clicking this Browse for Image button right here, or simply drag and drop anywhere within this main window. Next, if you would like to crop or rotate your image, you can do that by clicking the third icon up from the bottom of the tool column. Once selected, open the Crop dropdown, and you'll have a few options. You can manually input your width and height, drag the sides and corners of the preview frame, or choose from the list of preset aspect ratios over here. For this example, I will use the standard aspect ratio for a YouTube thumbnail, 16, 9. Now if you want to resize the crop and not lose your aspect ratio, you can do this by clicking and dragging by the corners. Just be sure to grab the corners and not the sides. When finished, head down to the bottom of the tool column and select the text icon. Click on add text and immediately a box will appear. Type your desired text into the box, then click OK. To resize and rotate the text, click and drag the double-headed arrow located at the bottom right of the text window. To reposition, just grab anywhere within the frame and drag to your preferred placement. Now, let's take a look at the text tools. Choose from the large variety of font options in the dropdown over here. When doing this, I found that by clicking on the font name, you can quickly flip through the fonts by tapping the up or down arrow key on your keyboard. Now with the font chosen, let's move on to the text coloring options. Using these tools, you can adjust the fill color, the outline color, and by using the slider bar, you can adjust the outline width. You can also add colored backgrounds and frames. Now for this example, I'm going to give my text a little bit of an arc so that my text follows the curve of the landscape. I'm able to do this by using the text warp. So I will click the drop down menu and select curve. By adjusting the slider bar, I can bend the text to resemble the shape of the terrain. Now I will place the text in the final position, slightly overlapping the green landscape. I realize this probably doesn't make sense yet, but hang in there, it'll all come together in a minute, I promise. With your text in place, click on the save icon in the top right corner. Give your image a name, select browse, and choose where you would like your image to be saved. Now click save. Once your image is saved, delete the text by clicking this pink X on the top left corner of the text window. Now with the text cleared out of the way, select the remove background tool, which is the fourth icon down from the top of the tool column. Using this tool, I will begin removing the water and mountains from the background, basically getting rid of anything that will remain behind my text in the final image. To do this, I will begin with this green foreground brush, roughly outlining the part of the image that I would like to keep. By the way, if you want to get detailed, you can zoom in by using the scroll wheel on your computer mouse, or by adjusting the slider bar on the bottom left of your preview window. Now after finishing the foreground, Click on the background brush and roughly outline the background you would like to remove. Once completed, you will see the foreground outlined and your background shaded out. Now click next step. At this step, your background will be removed and you will be given a few refining tools to help you get more detailed. When working through these steps, I mainly just focus on the areas that the text will be touching the foreground image, since these will be the only noticeable spots. The rest of the image will blend seamlessly into the background. Now once you're happy with the way it looks, click next step to fully remove the background. Now with the background removed, it's time for the best part, bring in your image. To do this, simply click add image, select upload, and choose the image previously saved. And just like that, you have text behind objects. If you need to make any extra adjustments, just remember the back button is your best friend. If no adjustments are needed, click apply and be sure to save your final image. One final note to leave you with. If you will be uploading onto a platform like YouTube and find your image doesn't meet the size requirements, you can easily correct this by reducing the overall size of your image with the resize tool down here. Thanks for watching.